God might forgive you, but I won't. Strong words today from the father of a murdered Scott County teenager as the suspect makes his first appearance in front of a judge. We're told he was always by his grandfather's side, and last night was no different. We're learning new details about the death of a Madison County teenager who died after he was stung by a wasp. We're just four days away from the Wildcats kicking off a new season. We have some game day changes that fans need to know before heading to Commonwealth Stadium. This is WKYT News at 5. For the first time today, her family came face to face with her accused killer. 15 year old Morgan Penn died from a gunshot wound on Saturday. Her family says she was shot while at a friend's home for a sleepover. 27 year old Michael Davidson is charged with her murder. He faced a judge this afternoon. WKYT's Hillary Thornton was at the hearing and talked to Morgan Penn's father. She has our top story at five. And this is what you took, buddy. It's right here. I returned what you took. A grieving father and other family and friends at the Scott County Courthouse today as the man accused of killing their loved one made his way in front of a judge. Words can't explain how bad me, family members, and everything's pain is brought to them because of that coward. Police Michael Davidson fired shots into a home, bullets hitting and killing 15 year old Morgan Penn. The teen's family saying she was at that home in Parker's Mobile Home Park and Stamping Ground with several friends. This man went and supposedly got a gun, shot a trailer up. Not only did he kill my daughter, murder my daughter, but there's other kids in that trailer, and I think he should be charged with attempt to murder on all of them. Davidson's family members were also in the courtroom. However, they did not wish to speak on camera. While the accused killer's dad did not want to talk on camera, he did break down in tears, saying he is extremely sorry. What Penn's family and friends are having to go through. A not guilty plea was entered for Davidson, his bond remaining at $100,000. God might forgive you, but I won't. In Scott County, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Davidson is due back in court for a preliminary hearing on September 8th. Also, a sad story out of Madison County a 17 year old has died following complications from a wasp sting. The coroner says that Austin Boggs was working with his grandfather last night when he was stung and had trouble breathing. He could not be saved. WKYT's Monique Blair is in Berea, where his school is already planning to help his family. 17 year old Austin Boggs was a student here at Madison Southern High School. This Friday, the Pep Club will be accepting donations before the Friday night football game. All that money will go towards helping his family pay for funeral costs. Madison County Coroner James Cornelison says Austin Boggs was working with his grandfather Monday night when he was stung by a wasp. At that point, he had trouble breathing and was taken to Berea Hospital where he could not be resuscitated. Boggs was pronounced dead around 7 o'clock Monday night. The coroner tells me Boggs did have known allergies and he did have an EpiPen prescription, but he could not say whether or not the EpiPen was with Boggs at the time of the incident. Today I spoke on the phone with Brittany Lawson, a friend of Boggs' family who says Boggs did have his EpiPen on him when he was stung. Lawson says it wasn't surprising to hear Boggs and his papa were working together when this happened because she says they were often inseparable. If you saw John, you saw Austin. He was his papa's sidekick. They were always together. He was a big papa's boy. Today, grief counselors were here at the high school to help any students who may be having a hard time dealing with this sudden tragedy. In Berea, Monique Blair, WKYT. A GoFundMe page has been set up to help Austin Boggs' family. You can find a link to that page on WKYT.com. The sheriff calls it one of the worst cases of abuse his office has ever worked. Our county by county coverage at five begins in Franklin County. Deputies arrested Andrew and Kimberly Powell this morning on three counts of criminal abuse. The sheriff says the couple's three young children were extremely malnourished and were living in deplorable conditions. The sheriff says the parents covered all the windows in their home with black plastic and would also lock the children in bedrooms alone. The children are now in state custody. We'll have more on the investigation on WKYT News at 6. In Nelson County, there's new information today in the search for a missing Kentucky mother. Crystal Rogers disappeared more than a year ago. The sheriff believes she is no longer alive. 
Today, investigators are searching 300 acres on two neighboring farms. One belongs to the mother of the suspect in the case. This is the third time investigators have searched that farm, but they're looking in a different area. The search is expected to continue through tomorrow. How dangerous is the chemical in the ground? That's what people who live along a country road in Montgomery County want to know. We first told you yesterday the EPA had confirmed high levels of arsenic in the dirt around Long Lane off of US 460. Today, state investigators were back on that scene to try to determine just how bad the contamination is. Our Sean Moody has the update. Environmental workers have spent the day out here trying to get a sense of exactly how widespread this problem is. A spokesperson for the Energy and Environment Cabinet said some of the arsenic levels out here require immediate action. This came to light last week when an environmental inspector came out to the property as part of an audit they were doing. The site had been a wood pressure treating company years ago. And when the inspector showed up, the spokesman said he was surprised to find residences on the property. Well, I think there's legitimate questions about how these homes came to be on this property. And I have no answers to that right now. The inspector did arsenic level tests in some of these yards and found various levels that were concerning enough for the cabinet to act quickly. We will be looking at um, pursuing whoever the responsible party is, but in the meantime, we are not waiting for that. We will do the work and uh, we will pay for it. According to that spokesman, some preliminary numbers were in the hundreds. One spot tested with a preliminary number of more than 13,000 parts per million. Put that into context, a Kentucky waste management worker out here told me they typically want to see these levels around 30 parts per million or lower. Several people who've lived along here are upset now realizing they've been living near these arsenic levels for some time. The main thing is why? Why wasn't it taken care of before this land was ever sold? That's ridiculous. The cabinet spokesman said in order to clean up arsenic, you have to remove all the soil that contains it. Without knowing exactly how big a footprint we're talking about here, it's hard to say what kind of job that'll be. In Montgomery County, Sean Moody, WKYT. A neighbor said the company that used to be there, Southern Wood, has been gone for more than 15 years. A few scattered storms this evening across southern Kentucky, and we could see even more tomorrow before some big changes arrive. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is in the First Alert Weather Center with a look at the forecast. Chris? Yes, indeed. Another steamy and for some of us stormy day out there, but ah, let us get to the end of the week and a much better weather pattern. We have put up with a lot of steamy weather this summer. We deserve some good stuff. Live look outside, Hamburg Pavilion in the distance, mix of sun and clouds over top of us. Current temperature, Lexington 90, feels like 92, so nowhere near as humid today as what we've been dealing with over the past few days. And winds are actually coming out of the northwest right now. Uh, upper 80s to right around 90 and a much of Central and Eastern Kentucky. Farther southeast that you go, we've had a little more in the way of some showers and thunderstorms, thus keeping us a few degrees cooler. That heat index still uh, 90 to 95 for a few areas of Central Kentucky. Defender radar network, Bluegrass region, nada. 64 in north, nothing going on. 64 in south. You've got to get way south to pick up on some isolated stuff right on top of the Lake Cumberland area. Monticello, imagine Lake Cumberland this weekend with the nice weather we've got coming your way. Uh, from the uh, How Rogers Parkway, Big Sandy Valley, Couple of showers and thunderstorms out there, and the future radar suggesting whatever's out there is going to fall apart and die out as we go into post sunset. Cold front across the Plain States is on the way to Kentucky, and we are tracking it in all its beautiful, cool weather glory with the hour by hour forecast. When I get back in a few. Portions of Hillary Clinton's interview with the FBI over her use of a private email server while she was Secretary of State could soon be made public. And on the Republican side, Donald Trump is preparing to clear up questions surrounding his immigration proposals with a major speech on the topic. CBS's Craig Boswell is at the White House with campaign 2016 updates. Sources tell CBS News the FBI has changed its position and will soon release some notes from its interview with Hillary Clinton. Clinton has previously called on the bureau to make the notes public and has maintained she did nothing illegal. FBI Director James Comey said Clinton was grossly negligent with handling emails on a private server while she was Secretary of State, but did not recommend prosecution. Donald Trump has used the FBI's investigation to hammer away at her trustworthiness. The FBI found thousands of work-related emails she failed to turn over. It's Watergate all over again. 
Trump is preparing for what he calls a major policy speech on immigration in Arizona Wednesday. There are questions surrounding his recent statements on immigration that conflict with his pledge to deport every undocumented immigrant. He hasn't talked about that in a very long time. So is he in favor of it or and against it? He has not talked about that in a very long time. And <laughs> you understand well, you're you still have to not, wait till Wednesday. You understand you're not answering the question. Clinton has been laying low, doing fundraisers, and getting ready for the debates. These are going to be probably the biggest debates ever in history as far as ratings go. I mean, there's going to be a lot of interest coming in. And, you know, if you believe the maxim, and I do, that, that many, many voters don't tune in until after Labor Day, this is going to be the first encounter they have with, with this campaign. The first of three scheduled presidential debates is Monday, September 26th. Craig Boswell, CBS News, the White House. And the second debate will take place on October 9th, and the final debate, October 19th. That's just 20 days before the election. You may want to head to Commonwealth Stadium even earlier for Saturday night's season opener. Find out about changes in parking for season ticket holders in 10 minutes on WKYT. Then in Better Living, find out some alternatives to EpiPens. There are some other drugs on the market. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Thermometers out there today hitting the upper 80s to low 90s before we got in on some at least scattered thunderstorms out there. And the current numbers actually go from 91 on the high side into the bluegrass area to 77 into southeastern Kentucky, Harlan County, dealing with some cooler air because you've got some showers and thunderstorms. If you're wondering why we're not focusing on the I-64 area and north, you've got nothing to worry about right now. All the action is across southern and southeastern Kentucky, and even here, it's fairly isolated in nature, and it's working from east to west. Lake Cumberland got some drops moving in. The Manchester area over toward Hyden, a couple of showers and thunderstorms. Same areas that were being hit yesterday are getting in on the act again. We're going to worry, though, tomorrow about some thunderstorms that will be developing just ahead of a strong cold front. That front is being pushed by a blast of fall like air. As we say hello to September, on a, like we flipped the calendar, we're flipping a switch to some cooler air on the first day of September. That final day of August, though, isn't going out on a cool note. A lot of mid and upper 80s tomorrow. Late day thunderstorms can be on the strong side into much of the area. Three day forecast now. Winds will pick up as well tomorrow. Thursday looks a whole lot better than what we've been dealing with, and it's going to feel even better into the afternoon. Morning shower, thunderstorm will give way to some afternoon sun, and a great day with temperatures that may not get out of the upper 70s. Many of us will spend Friday mid to upper 70s with an early fall feel after we start things out into the 50s to begin the day. Here's that pattern as we go into our Friday. High pressure on top of the Great Lakes, cool air coming into the Ohio Valley, much of the eastern part of the country. And by then, whatever is coming out of the Gulf of Mexico, this will likely be a tropical storm, should be spinning not too far away from the Savannah area and then working up the eastern seaboard. That should stay away from us, but it may also kind of help keep some of that cooler air locked in into the day on Saturday as that storm winds up across the eastern seaboard. Here's how we get to that fall pattern. Hour by hour breakdown into tomorrow morning. Start things out, a little fog, mid and upper 60s. Tomorrow afternoon, we storm it up. And that uh, thunderstorm complex leading to some changes. We blow into Thursday. If you wake up to some overcast on Thursday morning, and a lot of us will, Hang tough, maybe uh, still see some rain southern Kentucky. Look at the afternoon. Mix of sun and clouds, and notice how those clouds are coming in. Those are high clouds from the north, 63 by 11 o'clock Thursday. Say hello to your Friday morning. Mid 50s into much of central and eastern Kentucky with low humidity. That will be noted. That is the beginning of this long holiday weekend as we say goodbye to summer. Labor Day weekend, the unofficial goodbye to summer. Heading out to a high school football game on Friday night, you look to be in good shape. Saturday, Commonwealth Stadium, I'll be there, and I'll be bringing nice weather with me. Yeah. We'll uh, be there. We'll uh, be there cheering for you, you and the cats. Thank you. I'll be here all week. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. <laughs> and there's a collision on alumni. This one's on alumni, and it's uh, causing uh, alumni to be blocked near Nicholasville Road between Nicholasville and University. Uh, lights have just been restored at Manowar and Buckhorn, so we're now okay through there. Uh, and it uh, looks like Winchester Road in Midland, a non-injury crash the police are trying to clear. Drive times for now to Versailles, 12 minutes, to Paris, about 20. Now back to the studio. Chipotle is making another move to try and win back customers, and it's aimed at helping parents save money. 
Find out about free meals for children in five minutes on WKYT. Keep up with the latest news on WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. The UK football team kicking off the season Saturday night against Southern Mississippi. Today, university and city leaders met to talk about a few game day changes at Commonwealth Stadium. WKYT's Andrea Walker has what fans need to know. September is just a few days away, which means football season is upon us. Today, university and city leaders met at Commonwealth Stadium to talk about the upcoming football season. Uh, the world today is different than the world was a year ago. Uh, and there's been a lot of planning and coordination going on to make sure that this event is very safe for everyone that wants to attend. Much of today's press conference centered around some common sense rules like coming early, staying safe, and being responsible. But there are a few changes you need to be aware of, like changes in parking assignments. Numbers will be painted at the end of each row that will help you, guide you through those lots. It will also help us as first responders come to you when you need assistance. Traffic is always a major concern on game days, but the department is hoping a new partnership with the Waze app will help alleviate some of those concerns. And what that will do is it will allow the fans coming to the game to know what their wait times are, know what uh, travel routes are heavily congested, as well it helps the people in the public, the ones that are not coming to the game, to know what those road closures are. The UK Athletics Department has created a website and Twitter account to give fans and locals real time updates on game day information as well. We, as athletics, are the ones responsible for bringing the chaos to this part of Lexington and this part of the state. But we need the fans and the students to be around and be with us to help us cheer on the Wildcats, not only in football, but all of our sports and all of our venues. In Lexington, Andrea Walker, WKYT. You can find a link to UK's game day website with everything you need to know for the upcoming football season. Just go to WKYT.com. Chipotle is launching another campaign in the hopes of regaining customers they lost after a series of food scares. Every Sunday during the month of September, children will eat for free at the Mexican restaurant. It's one of several Chipotle promotions aimed at boosting sales. The chain has already given away millions of free burritos this year towards that end. A day with friends ending in tragedy on WKYT News at 530. We're in Laurel County where family and friends are dealing with the loss of a 17-year-old. EpiPen isn't the only life-saving allergy medication on the market. Find out about some alternatives ahead in Better Living on WKYT News at 5. It's time for Better Living, health education and consumer news that impacts your life. After facing backlash on skyrocketing prices, Mylan announced this week the launch a cheaper generic version of the EpiPen. But as Kathy Park reports, that's not the only alternative on the market for people who need the life-saving allergy medicine. When I'm using this, I'm trying not to die, basically. Cat Bessing doesn't go anywhere without her epinephrine. And realistically, you need more than one set. You know, I have one in my purse, I have one on my bedside, I have one in the kitchen. A rare health condition gives her no choice. I have a kind of an overclocked immune system that randomly triggers anaphylaxis. For five years, the medicine in this tiny tube came to her rescue dozens of times. And in the last year, she went from using EpiPens to this generic version of Adrenoclick. With an EpiPen, you just pull one off. It arms it and you put it in your thigh. You have to pull two off here. Mm -hmm. It's the only difference I can tell. It's the same uh, medication, the active ingredient is the same. Soon, patients will have access to another generic on the market. With the skyrocketing price of EpiPen, the maker, Mylan, received national backlash last week. The company announced plans to launch its first generic to EpiPen. That means they're listening to you know, patients that are actually using the product and paying for the product. The generic promises to be identical to the branded product, except you'll notice a huge savings, 50%. While Medicare and insurance have covered the cost for Bessing's drugs, many other families have had to foot the bill annually with the current products on the market. In terms of price difference, this is you know over $600 for the brand name EpiPen, and for the generic, you know, it's a little bit over $400. Mylan has said it hopes to have its generic version of EpiPen on the market in the next several weeks.
Some promising research in the fight against Zika. Scientists have discovered that three existing drugs could be useful in counteracting the effects of the virus. So far, experiments have only been conducted in petri dishes, but the results were dramatic. The drugs are currently used to treat cancer, hepatitis C, and parasitic infections. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg says he'll show off his robot butler as early as next month. As part of his New Year's resolution, Zuckerberg said he was building an artificial intelligence assistant to help operate his home. He says it can already control the lights and adjust the temperature. Now here's what's coming up on WKYT News at 530.